Cody. Yeah? You still playing with those uh, EEG toys? You mean the personal EEG devices? Uh, they're not toys. But like, it's just random signals. There's no actual truth to it, right? What do you mean? They get perfect EEG data. Like, it's been verified by third-party independent studies. Well, why don't you just, just go get a real lab and just get real equipment? That's not the point. It's exponential technology, democratization of medicine. I mean, this is the reasons these are the things that I talk about. Why don't you just go cry about that on your YouTube channel? Maybe I will. Maybe I'll enjoy watching it. All right, this is Dr. Cody Rall with Tech for Psych. So how do we know that the signal from these personal EEG devices like Emotive or Muse is actually legitimate? How do we know that these companies are not designing these products that look like they're getting EEG signal, but basically just fooling the public? Well, one of the best ways to do that is to have a third party do an independent scientific review or analysis or experiment with the actual device. And that's really what we have. There's been several studies published independently from these companies. Um, there's one in 2013 on the Emotive system and one that I'd like to talk about today from March 2017 on the Muse system. So in this study, a researcher named Dr. Kriegelson and his team at University of Victoria decided to take a look at the EEG signal from the Muse headband. And one of the best ways to do this is take a look at something called the Evoked Related Potential or ERP. Basically what happens is when the brain is presented with a stimulus, it reacts in a certain way. As you can imagine, different firing patterns go off when presented with the new stimulus. And this can be measured over a series of trials, averaged together, and presented as a graph called an evoked related potential. Now the nomenclature for ERPs is pretty interesting. So you get a voltage shift, and then you get measurements of time in milliseconds. So, uh, and there should be different peaks from the averaged out data. The graph is almost turned upside down, so a negative spike in voltage will go up and a positive spike in vo voltage will go down on the graph. And you'll often see things like N200 or P300, and what that means is that uh, you get a negative voltage spike of, at 200 milliseconds, which goes up on the graph, followed by a positive spike in voltage at 300 milliseconds that goes down on the graph. And this is the ERP that they were looking for. It's produced in something called the oddball paradigm. So what they do is sit people in a dark room and then have them look at a screen and present them different stimulus. And in this experiment, what they did is that uh, they would have blue circles 25% of the time and green circles 75% of the time. So as you can imagine, they're sitting there watching the screen and having the EEG uh, data being recorded and showing them circles. Actually, they, they would show a cross point before they would show the circles just to make sure that the eyes were focused in the right area. And then they would show a green circle and record that data. And then they would show a blue circle and record that data. And because the blue circle was less frequency than the green circles, it produced a different ERP signal. I think they did three trials where they showed the different circles multiple times. They took that data, averaged it out, and then subtract the ERP from the blue circles from the ERP of the green circles, re representing the final wavelength pattern. So the idea of doing this and why doing ERPs is important is because it's almost like a litmus test for EEG. So basically what you need to do is have good bioimpedance, meaning that the connection between the scalp and the electrode is good that the transmission of that signal through the actual sensor and through the wiring to the device is good, that the amplifier within the device that takes the signal and amplifies it for analysis, uh, digital analysis is good. So if any of those components are not good, you're not gonna get a good ERP signal, meaning that it was like a perfect litmus test for the Muse headband. Now what they did is they got 60 participants to sit down and do these trials. And basically what they did was compare the Muse headband to a medical grade device called ActiChamp that cost $75,000. Okay, so at the time, the Muse headband cost $200. So you can imagine the interest of the researchers to take a look at, wow, if we can get similar EEG signal from one device compared to the other, that really reduced uh, laboratory costs. It's more portable, which is great for different studies that we want to do for EEG, and the setup time is much less. And as they discussed in the paper, the setup time for the $75,000 uh, 
uh, ActiChamp system for each client, you know, it required them to sit down, have two lab technicians, which cost money, put on a cap, fill the little uh, scalp electrode uh, insertion points with gel, uh, you know, record the EEG, and then uh, take the cap off, get all the goo out of the hair. That took like an hour for each client. And they said for the Muse headband, it took about 10 minutes because you just throw on the Muse headband, go through the oddball paradigm, get the data, and then you're done. So not only is there a huge price difference, but there's a huge time difference in the actual EEG data collection uh, strategy as well. So here's what they found. The limitation to the Muse headband is that it didn't have as many electrodes as the ActiChamp. And I'm not saying the Muse headband is as good as the ActiChamp system in every way. Obviously, if you're doing more nuanced neuroscience research that requires a lot of electrodes, you are going to want to use something more close to the ActiChamp system. Um, but that doesn't mean that a lot of neuroscience studies can't be done with the Muse headband or uh, per other personal EEG devices like Emotive because you can take that data and democratize it and get way more data than you would with the ActiChamp system. And I'll cover that in a little bit. But basically what we're talking about is quality of EEG signal. So what they did was they actually configured the ActiChamp data to match the Muse data for what reference electrodes were being used. Now Muse uses uh, four active electrodes and a reference electrode, meaning that there's four channels of data. And they configured the actual which uh, electrodes in the active, active champ system that corresponded to the Muse system to potentially get a similar ERP pattern because the ERP pattern is going to depend on what electrodes you're using on the scalp. And what they found was a very similar waveform. Uh, and it, they were saying in the paper that they were very impressed that there was basically no difference between the Muse system and the ActiChamp system on the active electrodes that were being used in terms of what data was collected in the oddball paradigm. So that was a really good litmus test. It really showed that the Muse headband was on par with this other technology that was costing much more and in both money and time for setup and data collection. So the advantages and disadvantages are that the actual EEG signal is very similar between uh, something like the Muse headband and the ActiChamp. If you need a lot of different electrodes, you know, up to 256 of them, for example, uh, you probably would want to be using the ActiChamp. But if you have neuroscience studies that don't require so many electrodes, you can definitely use something like the Muse. And as they said in the paper, the advantage of the Muse system and other products like it is that it sort of democratizes data. And I'm going to have a video coming out on this pretty soon is this idea of no longer having to be uh, confined just to laboratory to do neuroscience studies where uh, because of the long setup time and the costs, you don't get very many test subjects. So like instead of having 60 test subjects for a study, you could have thousands and thousands of test subjects for a study. And the idea is that um, you could, you know, have a lot of Muse devices floating around out there and in the app store set up an app that people can download that run you through a series of exercises and it will collect data and that gets all sent back to the researchers to do their data with. And they have a lot more data from a lot more people and use different you know, machine learning and other AI uh, analysis techniques to draw conclusions from the data. And I think that's a future paradigm of research is taking a look at what studies need to be limited to the lab and maybe not have as many test subjects but be under more rigor. And what studies would really benefit from having a lot more data, maybe less rigor, but uh, you know, just having so much more data to draw conclusions from because you have thousands of people that are offering their data through a certain paradigm that you want to test. And I think that's going to be uh, a new revolution of research, not only in neuroscience, but in uh, medicine and other areas as well. So be looking out for that as wearables be become more integrated into our lives and our uh, gathering data. And you, it'd be interesting to see if more and more of that is published in scientific journals down the line. So, you know, backing up, that's one of the reasons, that's one of the studies that I would definitely look at to, uh, you know, solidify that understanding of the quality of EEG signal from personal EEG devices like Muse and Emotive. And I really recommend and I love that Muse and Emotive have put these studies right up front on their website to help um, alleviate 
maybe not the average consumer's fears, but actually definitely researchers, I would say, are the most skeptical people in these environments that wonder about the quality of the EEG signal. And when we're investigating the technology ourselves, there you got that nice research paper that you can reference and alleviate fears that you're talking about something that is uh, scamming people. So really important point to bring up here with my investigation into personal EEG devices. Hope you liked it. Dr. Cody Roll with Tech for Psych. If you guys are interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching with me, take a look at www.techforpsych.com coaching. Really appreciate it. Talk to you again next time soon.